How quickly the narratives shift in college football. This time a week ago, UCF was the confident, hungry home team ready to pick apart a beleaguered, so-called bigger program humbled in defeat. The script is flipped Saturday as the Knights embark on a trip down the turnpike, where Florida Atlantic hopes to pounce after their woeful second-half offensive performance in a 20-14 loss to Louisville. More, three takeaways from UCF Knights' loss to Louisville Moore, potentially missing Kobe Hudson, Brian O'Keefe, UCF's WR depth could be tested senior quarterback John Reese Plumlee completed just two of his 11 passes in the fourth quarter, squandering two late chances for a tying or go-ahead score. He was not helped by a ravaged receiving core, relentless pressure from Louisville's rushers and inefficiency in the running game. UCF, 1-1 failed to score on each of its final 10 possessions, 7 punts, a missed field goal, an interception, and a turnover on downs. Copyright Mike Waters USA Today Sports UCF Knights running back Johnny Richardson, 0, carries the ball during the second quarter Friday, September 9, 2022, against the Louisville Cardinals at FBC Mortgage Stadium in Orlando, Florida. UCF holds a 3-0 all-time mark against FAU, 2-1, 1-0 Conference USA, where former South Florida head coach Willie Taggart is in his third year in charge. The Knights' most recent trip to Boca Raton was a routine 48-14 victory in 2019, gaining 574 yards of total offense as five players ran for a touchdown. Zachary Weinberger, a correspondent who covers the Owls for the Palm Beach Post, breaks down whether things might be different this time around and answers five burning questions regarding all things FAU. Boyle, Encosi Perry is FAU's first incumbent starting QB in nine years. How has he looked in his second year in the offense, and where have the biggest improvements come? Weinberger, short answer, he looks great. Not only does he rank second in college football with 879 passing yards, but is also tied for second with nine touchdown passes. When coming into the program last season, he didn't have a true offseason. He missed the spring, making it harder to truly build the relationships needed to be a leader of the team. In 2022, that has changed. Receiving absolute praise from Owls head coach Willie Taggart and multiple players, he has achieved the respect from the team to lead this team to the hopeful promised land. The graduate student has seen massive improvement in his confidence and decisiveness. Copyright contributed FAU offensive coordinator Brent Dearman leads spring practice in Boca Raton in March 2022. Boyle, first-year offensive coordinator Brent Dearman entered the college coaching ranks as an analyst at Auburn under Gus Malzahn, and he's fishing buddies with UCF defensive coordinator Travis Williams. What's working with his scheme and play calling? And how does he plan to outweat those who know him so well? Weinberger, Dearman spoke highly Tuesday morning of both Malzahn and Williams, since they obviously go back. So far, his offense has been effective in throwing opposing defenses off and keeping them on their toes. While it helps that he has talented playmakers on that side of the ball, he brings a youthful intensity to the team. FAU has scored 38 or more points in each of its three games. However, because he's facing a team like UCF with coaches that know him well, expect Dearman to open up the playbook and throw something we haven't seen before this season. It does seem, with these past three games, Dearman and company have been hiding and keeping designs on lockdown until a game like UCF comes around. ITLL be interesting to see what he brings against his former colleagues. Downing, Isaiah J. Downing USA Today Sports September 25, 2021 Colorado Springs, Colorado, USA, Florida Atlantic Owls running back Johnny Ford, 5, runs through the tackle of Air Force Falcons cornerback David Ure, 33, in the fourth quarter at Falcon Stadium. Mandatory credit, Isaiah J. Downing USA Today Sports Boyle, it sounds like Johnny Ford could be available, and he's a player UCF fans will remember from his time at South Florida. Will he be a full go, and how does he slot in with Larry McCammon and Zubri Mobley already running effectively? Weinberger, seems like a cop-out answer, but I don't know for certain if he will be a full go. I don't think he plays Saturday. Taggart has cited personal reasons for Ford missing the first three games of the season and has used the term probable as his status during that time as well. 
Weird situation, but we could know more Thursday when Taggart speaks next to the media. If, and that's a big if, he plays, it's just one more playmaker the opposing team has to worry about. While McCammon and Mobley are effective pure runners, Ford has that dual threat ability that made him lethal in his time at USF and last season with the Owls. Boyle, how will the passing game evolve should wide receivers Jaquan Burton and Jamal Edrine return this week? Weinberger, Perry prefers distributing the ball to his pass catchers. While having a player like LaJonte Wester can be great against a team like Southeastern Louisiana, they'll need a fully healthy offense if FAU wants a chance to upset the Knights. It's going to force the Owls' offensive line to contain UCF's defensive front so Perry can make his reads and be successful in this offense, but ITLL also helped Deerman's play calling more diverse and less vanilla. Copyright contributed Florida Atlantic sophomore defensive Evan Anderson takes part in the opening day of spring practice in Boca Raton on March 15, 2022. Boyle, on the other hand, defensive tackle Evan Anderson and Orlando native was ruled out Monday. How significant a loss is he to stopping UCF's ground game? Which defenders should the Knights be most conscious of? Weinberger, it's devastating news for FAU. Arguably their best defensive player, he's been a monster at the defensive tackle slash nose tackle position, a constant disruptor as a pass rusher and run stuffer. With him gone, I expect players like Jacob Merrifield and King Green to step in place for Anderson, Merrifield, especially, as he was listed on top of the depth chart and played well against Ohio and Sela. Still, I expect UCF to pound the football in the middle as, without Anderson, FAU is vulnerable in the run game. Taggart, coaches, and players have been talking constantly about their depth. They'll have to prove that this Saturday in arguably their biggest game of the season. This article originally appeared on the Daytona Beach News Journal. Know your FOE, Nkosi Perry, Florida Atlantic, look to make statement at home against UCF.